We've talked about measurement using rulers, but what we need to talk about is uh, measurements involving volume, and specifically liquid volume. Um, and so with liquids, we use graduated cylinders to measure the volume of those liquids. And graduated cylinders come in all different sizes. Um, and for instance, here I've got what appears to be a 500 milliliter graduated cylinder. Here I've got what appears to be, it's a zoomed in version of a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder. And here I've got what's a zoomed in version of a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder. But they make some that are bigger and some that are smaller as well. So it's important to um, pay attention to the scaling. So we're just gonna practice read these guys, okay? And so I'm gonna zoom in on this one here. Um, so the very first thing you're gonna notice about all of these, let me zoom back out for a second, all of these, Liquids have a tendency to not lay flat when they get into very narrow containers. That's because the liquid actually is attracted to the side of the wall of the glass or the plastic or whatever your graduated cylinder is made of. That causes the particles to create this like curvy feature and that's called a meniscus. Let me write that. Meniscus. That meniscus is just the shape of that we're seeing there. And the way to read the meniscus is at the bottom, at bottom of the curve or the meniscus, okay? And so we'll do that in just a second, but let's first go through our rules. Step one, we need to identify our scaling, okay? So our scaling here, you can see that we have, I'm just gonna zoom in on this part right here. Oop, we have 50, let me do a, this. We have 50 and we have 100, okay? And so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 jumps between them, okay? So if you think about this, the difference between these is 50 milliliters, and there are 10 ticks in between them. So if I take that divided by the number of ticks, 10 ticks, then that should be equal to five milliliters per tick. So what that means is this tick right here is 55, that's, that is um, 60, so on and so forth. So this big one right here is halfway in between those two, and that would be 75 milliliters because it's halfway in between 50 and 100, okay? So now by looking at that, let's zoom in a little bit more and see if we can get as good a measurement as possible. Oh, man, look at that. There's the bottom of the meniscus right there. I'll get rid of that, okay? Um, so we can see it a little bit better, but that would be... 105, 110, 115, 120, 125. Man, that's like right on the line of 130. So you could say, okay, that is definitely 130 for sure. And then you need to throw in some level of uncertainty. Um, and so with this scaling here, the level of uncertainty is actually in this number right here, the zero. The reason that number is uncertain is because... Um, it could be slightly above, it could be slightly below that. So it could be 129, it could be 131. Um, and so the level of uncertainty is in that zero. However, writing this in the correct number of significant figures is somewhat important. We should be able to get three significant figures out of this uh, measurement. And so you could call that 130 point milliliter because even though that's an, uh, um, even though there's uncertainty of that number, it's still a significant number. And so therefore, I would write it like that, 130 period, okay? Now, let's talk about this one over here. So for step one, we identify the scaling on this, okay? So this is 20, this is 30, and then we've got one, two, three, four, up to five, okay? So the difference between these is 10 milliliters. If I divide that by, uh, five ticks to get to the top that means each tick is two milliliters okay so in this case here you're going to notice that this one oh man look at that that is like right on that line right there so that'd be 32 34 36 38 you call that 38 and in this case here you can go to a decimal point here because you can tell with high certainty whether it's in between 38 and 39 and so therefore because it's right on that line I'm going to call this 38.0 milliliters and that would be the correct measurement on that volume okay now let's talk about this one over here 
final one. This one over here is, um, we're gonna look at the scaling. Down here is zero, down here is, up here is one. So I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, that's easy. Each one of these is 0.1 just like the rule, just like the centimeter scale. So therefore, when I come up here to read this guy, let me zoom in here. There we go. I'll trace that over to that line right there. I can see that it's definitely one point, and then that's 1 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 1.4, 1 1.5. So it's definitely 1.5 at least, but it's in between those two. So therefore, the 1.5, uh, I'd say it's a little bit below half, so maybe I call that 1.353 milliliters, and that would be the correct measurement on that, okay? Now, one thing I want to quickly notice before uh, I end this video is, notice how over here, you didn't have any decimal points in your answer, but here you have one decimal point, and here you have two decimal points. That's because the smaller the instrument the higher the precision in terms of graduated cylinders. So if you have, are dealing with smaller uh, measurements, you can get more decimal points. If you're dealing with a very large graduated cylinder, it's hard to be really super duper precise to so many decimal points.